welcome to the Paper Crane Yarns Knitting Podcast. So today's episode is a little bit different than usual. I'm sure you've seen these videos uh, floating around on the YouTubes, um, but today I am going to film a wrap up of all of the things I've made um, in this past year. So um, all of the knits and uh, quilts and crochet projects that I've sewn with these two hands in 2022. Um, yeah, I'm so excited to be surrounded right now. You guys can't see it, but I am sitting in like an alcove of handmade stuff, which is incredible. Um, but uh, first, as I said, my name is Ashley. If this is your first uh, time joining me, I am a yarn dyer and I also own a brick and mortar location, a yarn store in central Alabama, USA. So that is where I'm filming and recording. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Ravelry here, <laughs> Facebook as Paper Crane Yarns, and I'll have everything linked down below. And I have a website, which is papercraneyarns.com. If you would like to shop my store, everything I sell in store, I have online. Uh, so yeah, those are my quick little about me. Um, all of my very many projects, I'll have the details down below. So um, if you want to take a look at any of these patterns uh, or the yarns, Yes, you know where to find those, and if you have trouble with anything, or if something seems to be missing, or a mistake, just leave me a comment, and I'll make sure I get you that information. Uh, yeah, so today uh, I'm really excited. It's actually taken me a couple of hours of prep just to get everything <laughs> together in one place. Um, the beautiful thing about having a yarn store is I kind of have two stashes, so I've got my my stuff that's here at the shop. I've got my stuff that's at the house. Um, so I had to sort of look back through my previous episodes and my Ravelry project pages and try to remember everything I actually did this year. Hopefully I, hopefully I accomplished that. <laughs> so I'm not really going to do anything in a particular order. I think I'll go maybe by category. Um, for once I actually took notes, so that will hopefully, uh, hopefully help me to stay on track. I tend to lose my train of thought quite a bit. Um, so yeah, this has been a wonderful year for making things. Um, if you, uh, if I've perhaps met you before or you've kind of watched my journey <laughs> here on YouTube, um, 2022 has brought me some very beautiful um, things in my life. So I had a baby. <laughs> That's my my best project. Um, my baby was born in July, my daughter, so she's a couple days short of five months old, which is shocking. Um, so yeah, I had my baby and I also opened my yarn store. I opened um, my brick and mortar location on January 29th of this year. And um, before that, I was just selling on Etsy. So my one year anniversary for the shop is actually coming up and uh, so January 28th of 2023, I'll be having an anniversary party at the store. So I hope that maybe some of y'all will join me for that. I'm going to try to make it fun. And yeah, I'm just, I'm looking forward to that. So those are my two best projects, I would say for this year, baby and yarn store. <laughs> those are tough to beat, um, if I do say so myself. But I do have some amazing handmade things that I would like to show you. So hopefully you find something in here that inspires you or, um, Maybe you should try this, whether you want to film it or not. Um, I think this is a fun kind of video diary is how I look at these podcasts for myself and for my daughter when she's older and she can kind of look back and um, such a fascinating time period that we live in that theoretically my five-month-old daughter could watch me here at the age of 26, my first year of business, um, and who knows what is coming along, you know, down the line. So I hope that she gets to watch this at some point and um, take enjoyment and kind of get to know me more. And yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. And Ara, if you're watching this in the future, um, that's really cool. And hey, <laughs> um, all right. I'm gonna try my best not to ramble. I should set a timer, but I'm watching the time at the top and I'm gonna try to go through very quickly. If you would like more details about all of my projects, um, perhaps go back to previous episodes. 
I think everything I'm going to talk about today for the most part has been in a video. Um, so if you want details about the process or um, issues I may have encountered or anything like that, just feel free to take a look back, um, check out my Ravelry project pages and just let me know if, if you have any questions. Okay. So I'm going to start with sweaters. I'm going to try my best to hold this up and not drop everything. I have 10 sweaters to show you. Okay. Oh, wow. This is rather heavy. <laughs> this is a, uh, this is 10 sweaters in my lap. It's about as tall as my face. So let's go through each of these one by one. Maybe I should try to take a screenshot before I, uh, like my, uh, my picture before I unfold these. So I'll start with what's on top. And, um, some of these projects I may have started in 2021, like the end of 2021 and didn't finish them until 2022. I can't quite recall for all of them. I know I, there's only one sweater in here that I think that I'm, I'm quite sure I finished in 2022 but it may have been end of 2021, but regardless, doing my best. Okay. So this first sweater is the Marshland by Tin Can Knits. Marshland by Tin Can Knits. And this is knit out of uh, Wool of the Andes. This is the non-superwash, the worsted uh, Wool of the Andes that you can get from Knit Picks. And this is um, one of the adult sizes, one of the smaller adult sizes, I wanna say. Um, yeah, so it's, here's like close up, hopefully not getting too blown out. There's color work on the sleeves. There's color work along the hem. And of course this beautiful yoke pattern. So this is a very nice thick sweater. Um, I love the colors. I was inspired by another Ravelry project page page for this one and I pretty much imitated that knitter's um, color choices. They actually steeked theirs and formed theirs into a cardigan, um, which I have thought about trying because this is cute, but it's a little bit too long for me, I think. Um, a lot of these sweaters I made this year, I knit while pregnant and so it was kind of hard to get the perfect fit because of that. Um, but yeah, so that's Marshland. So that's number one. This one's very beautiful. Lots and lots of floats on the inside. Fun stuff. Sweater number two that I have on the stack. Um, this was one of my most recent sweater finishes. And so the ends are actually not woven in yet because this one's sort of a tale of woe, which I will save for my next podcast. But this is the Herbalist Swancho by Olga Putano. And um, it is absolutely stunning. It is so beautiful. So this one is knit out of my hand dyed yarns. This base is alpaca, cashmere, and silk. So as you can imagine, it's pretty much like touching a cloud. It's incredibly soft. So it's three a three color color work. Um, there's bees, there are roses, there are um, vines of leaves and more roses. <laughs> and uh, I love the little gold details here underneath these sort of color work pillars. Um, and because it's a swan show, you've got your sleeves all the way down here and yep, it goes all the way around. So there's the back. There's some short row shaping here at the neck and uh, yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. Unfortunately, while I can wear it, it is a tad too small. And because there is um, silk content in the yarn, there isn't as much stretch as, uh, perhaps uh, just a pure merino yarn. So I don't think I'll be wearing this. <laughs> again, I'll talk more about that on my next episode. But um, again, daughter, Ara, this will be yours <laughs> when you're a little bit bigger. So you have that to look forward to. Okay, number three. This is one that I started in November of 2021. And I think I finished it in the beginning of this year, but it may have been the end of last year, but I'm gonna just go with it. <laughs> So it's unbuttoned right now, but this is the Be Thankful cardigan by Lily Kate France. This is knit out of Green Mountain Spinnery Weekend Wool in the color Chestnut. And I got this yarn from Rhinebeck from New York Sheep and Wool 
um, in 2021. And actually the sweater I'm wearing is All Ho by Anna Johanna. This was my 2021 Rhinebeck sweater. So I was actually wearing this sweater when I bought this yarn. That's pretty cool. Um, so this is, again, the Be Thankful cardigan. It is extremely cute. It has gigantic sleeves. <laughs> so big balloon sleeves. Um, my buttons are extremely cute. I, I'm sure they're laser cut or something, but they are wood with moons and stars. Actually, they match my mug quite well. Um, there is this, I believe this was like a faux seaming detail on the shoulder. I love the stitches, how big and chunky this cardigan is, but it's cropped. Um, so it's really, really cute. There's a nice thick band of ribbing. Um, I think with this one, I want to say you pick up the ribbing collar at the end and do that band and add in your buttonholes and everything um, once you finish the body. But yeah, this was a very simple knit, um, fairly quick. I remember I went camping when I was knitting this and I knit this as part of Woolen Forests. Um, she did an, uh, she helped, she hosted a knit along for this cardigan. So this was my project. That's sweater number three. <laughs> Okay, continuing with the cardigans. This is my Reagan by Isabel Kramer. And it is knit out of Pearl Soho linen quill in the pale mushroom colorway. I wore this in a couple of, uh, an episode, a couple of episodes ago, I wore this when I was still pregnant. So I was miserable and it was warm and this is nice and lightweight. So this was a little bit better, although I'm sure I took it off at some point in the video. Yeah, so this is uh, Reagan and it's, beautiful. There's this Harabelle lace uh, design here and you just sort of, um, the construction for this was really, really cool. You knit this long stock net rectangle first and then you actually went around. So you did a provisional cast on for both of the sleeves. So there's no seams on the sleeves. They're perfect. Uh, no picking up stitches for that or anything. So that's really lovely. Um, a very simple neckline. It just sort of rolls. Um, really, really cute. And then, yeah, so once you knit this rectangle, you go through and you pick up all your stitches for your Harabelle lace, and then you repeat this as many times as you want for your length. So this cardigan comes down, I think a little bit, probably kind of over my hips a little, but yeah, so this one's nice. And of course it's that linen quill. So there's a little bit of that, uh, hello. So there's kind of that fuzziness to it. And again, it's very lightweight and the color is very neutral. It's not a color that I would normally pick out for myself, but I do like it quite a bit. I almost want to put it on because it's so cute. The shape is really cute. Um, you could definitely look at uh, Isabel Kramer's pro project photos for an idea of how to wear it. You can also wear it upside down, uh, which brings the sleeves real low and so it kind of gives it a baggier fit, but you can wear it like this. Um, I haven't really done that, but you can. <laughs> That makes me think of that Seinfeld episode when uh, George is talking to the woman in the building, and this is when he comes up with Art Vandalay, I think. And he says he's an architect, and he says that he operates trains, I think, and the woman says, uh, don't engineers do that? And he says, they can, which I just love. So anyway, that's, yeah, that's my Reagan by Isabel Kramer. Okay, my next cardigan is... The Getaway by Alicia Plummer. And this pattern, I believe, came out this year. So I think I was one of the first to knit it, which was fun. I just had this yarn on hand, so I just cast it on very quickly. Um, this is Brooklyn Tweed Shelter in the sweatshirt colorway. Um, there is a, it's the, the, bat, the, the back is fully um, charted and there's a texture to it. Of course, because it's the Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, this kind of um, you lose a little bit of that stitch definition just just a tad in this colorway So you can't really see it too well, but there's a lot of chevrons along the back and on the pockets. There is this shawl color um, Folded sort of ribbing that goes down uh, Yeah, that goes down the front of the cardigan nice Long sleeves. I actually have to roll these they're a little bit um, extra long which is nice for when it's very cold 
There are pockets. These are functional pockets. That's so cool. This was my first time knitting pockets. So yeah, nice and cozy. And um, I have already worn this quite a bit. Alabama and much of the South has been getting particularly cold temperatures. We've yeah, had a really cold uh, winter so far. So this has been extremely cozy, um, especially in the mornings when I am doing computer work. And uh, yeah, I love the, the look of it. It's really cute. And this is one of those sweaters that when you wear it um, and people find out it's handmade, they're very impressed. So that makes me feel good. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that is my getaway. Uh, again, you should look at the pictures to get a better maybe idea of what this looks like. It's kind of, it's a little bit difficult to uh, show it in this fashion. Um, my next sweater is a test knit for Olga Putano. It's another swatcho, and this one will not be released until I want to say middle of January. And she says we can share like project photos, but she doesn't want the finished object to be um, shown until the pattern is released. So I'm just going to show you a small section of the color work. I cannot wait to show you this sweater. It is hands down my favorite sweater I've ever knit. Um, I love it. It is gorgeous. So stay tuned for that. I'll make sure to actually wear it. Perhaps in my next episode it'll be released and I can do that, but I'm just going to show you a little section because she has this, she has a picture of the color work on her Instagram. So you definitely, uh, you would definitely be able to see this if you looked. So that's just a little look at it. I'm trying to keep it all bunched up, uh, keep it nice and secret for now, but it's beautiful. And this is my hand dyed yarns and um, the gold is a leftover from my lamb strings yarn, which I knit uh, my next sweater out of. And I'll go ahead and show you that. So um, the other three colors are my, my hand dyed yarns. But this Swancho by Olga Putano is all lamb strings yarns. Um, and this was probably my second favorite knit of the year. This one sparked my love for the Swancho fit and knitting it. And so I've literally knit three Swanchos, all by Olga Putano, um, in the past two months, I think is how long it's taken me to knit these. Um, yeah, I've been a little obsessed when she called for the test knit for the Sunny Swancho, which is the last one, if I didn't say, I jumped on it and I kept checking Ravel Ravelry, like, did I get in? Did I get in? And I was so glad when I got in, I cast on right away and I finished it in like two weeks. And that was, yeah, I was excited for it. <laughs> so this is my um, Cottage Swancho. It is absolutely beautiful. Um, the purple is a little bit low contrast with the gold, especially in this lighting, so it's kind of hard to see, but there's stars and other stars <laughs> in the purple. But yeah, this one's beautiful. So again, the sleeves are all the way down here, and there's like, yeah, it's just a very flattering and cozy um, knit. So that's sweater number, what are we on? Let's see, I've got one. Is this number seven? I think it's number seven. So my next sweater is the Love Note by Tin, by Tin Can Knits, I had to recall. So this one is actually also knit with my yarns and Lambstrings yarn. Um, this is uh, Lambstrings, this is their lace mohair. So you can see this is a pattern that's uh, fingering weight and lace mohair held double silk mohair. Um, and so then the Merino Singles is my hand dyed yarn that I dyed to kind of go with uh, this lace mohair that I got from India Untangled in 2021 when I visited uh, their booth. So this is one of my favorite sweaters. I wear this all the time. Um, this is probably my most worn sweater except uh, aside from my Alho, which I wear a lot. Yeah, nice um, cropped sort of. I could have probably made this a little bit more cropped next time I knit it. I'll, I'll knit it a little bit shorter. Um, I knit this when I was pregnant, so there was no telling what I needed. I did full length sleeves rather than the sort of three quarter or bracelet length, whichever the pattern calls for, because I like that. Um, so nice full length sleeves with a little bit of the balloon. So yeah, that's my love note. And next I have Arialis by Jennifer Steingass. This is also yarn that I got from my New York trip last October. I got this yarn from uh, the Perfect Blend Yarn and Tea Shop, and it is Kelborn Woolen's Scout, which I now carry in my shop, so you can get that on my website. I've got some other colorway choices, but um, yeah, so this is a really 
beautiful pattern. I wear this one quite a bit too. Um, since blocking it, it has grown quite a bit. So I, I want to say I knit the size three or so. I kind of wish I would have knit the size one for this one. Um, I like an oversized bit, but this one's quite oversized. I think part of what contributes to that, sorry, there's a truck. Okay. I think part of what contributes to that is in this pattern, there are options for sort of like unfinished finishing touches. And I opted for those because I thought that it would look cute. So I did sort of the rolled unfinished neckline and, um, sleeves. I'm sorry if you can still hear that truck. They're gone now, I think. Um, yeah. So if I were to even pick up these stitches and do a neckline, it might even, I don't know, maybe it would change my perspective of the fit. I do like that look a lot. I think it's really cute, but because the sweater is already a little bit too big, I usually have to do like a French tuck in the front and, um, tuck it into my jeans or, or whatever so that it looks a little bit more intentional with the sizing. But this was a very fun knit. This was one of my, one of my first color work knits. Um, so I was still getting used to that and having fun with it. Um, I think I, I want to say I finished this over the summer. The floats are really fun. Jennifer Zangas is a very popular designer. I'm sure you've seen some of her, um, patterns before. Yeah. So that is Arialis. And then it looks like I only have one more sweater to show you. Uh, that's adult sized. <laughs> so that is another love note. And I got this yarn at Maryland Sheep and Wool this year. Um, 2022 Maryland Sheep and Wool. This is Yarn Hero Stipple DK in the movie theater colorway. And it is really, really beautiful. So uh, Yarn Hero had the love note knit up um, in this colorway as a booth sample, which I can't say no to apparently. So I, I also made one for myself. Um, this year has been the year of kind of making sweaters a little bit too big for myself. So a lot of these sweaters are slightly larger than I would have liked. So, um, again, I think part of that was being pregnant for half the year and really unsure, um, because it was my first baby, unsure how my body would, um, sort of adjust and how things would fit me after pregnancy. Um, and also just being pregnant and sorry, there's mohair, I think on my nose. Yeah. Being pregnant, um, gaining weight in lots of different places that I have, um, thankfully lost, but when knitting garments, because that's what I did all year, I was knitting for the sort of then me. And now I kind of have this urge to go back and take out length and um, even in some cases like this one, I kind of want to rip out the whole sweater, but it's a non superwash yarn and it seems like it's probably prone to pilling. So I'm a little bit worried about pulling it out, but I'm tempted to pull this out and knit the smallest size of the pattern because this is not held double. This is just a DK weight yarn. So, um, the gauge is already a little bit bigger. So I should have gone down to the smallest size for the pattern, um, smallest adult size. Yeah. So I don't know. It's still beautiful. It's very cozy, but, um, yeah, wishing it was a little less oversized. There's quite a bit of positive ease. Okay. Those are my sweaters. Apparently got through those relatively quickly for, um, how long it sometimes will take me to talk about knits. Okay. So now I will go through my baby knits. I have one over here on the counter I need to grab. So let's talk about baby knits. And I'm sorry for my staticky hair. The winter and my hair, it just kind of goes everywhere and then everything I touch shocks me. It's fun. <laughs> okay, baby knits. Um, I think this is everything. So I plan on doing a lot more knitting for my daughter in the new year, for sure. But okay, so this is a, I think this is called the Basic Cuffed Hat by Pearl Soho classic cuffed hat in the baby size, um, by Pearl Soho and the yarn is Cascade 220. So this is nice. Um, it's now sort of the right size for her head. So, um, she can wear it for the rest of the winter. It's really cute. Very, very easy pattern. Um, yeah, I would recommend this for sure for 
gift knitting for babies. Then I have, I have this sweater. This is Go Get em Tiger by Espace Tricot and they came out with this pattern this year. It was very, very simple. I think this only took me two days to knit. It's a DK weight yarn and this one was special, um, not just because it was for my baby, but this was the first yarn I ever dyed. So these were um, gifted skeins when my husband very kindly um, gave me my first yarn and dyes uh, to try it out when I told him I was interested in learning. He surprised me with that, which was really special. And obviously it had quite a domino effect because here we are. Um, so yeah, it's my first ever yarns for my baby that my husband gave me and there's all kinds of special stuff knit into this sweater and I actually just washed it and blocked it for the first time last night so she's been wearing this unblocked um so it's been a little bit awkward so it's it's nice to see now with it blocked that it's definitely got a more regular shape than before but uh, she had just been wearing it and finally well with babies and spit up um it was time for a wash so yeah I finally got it I used lanolin wash bars uh, for all of my knitting, uh, my for all of my blocking, and then I use Eucalan more for maintenance or for something that's really wooly. I'll always use the lanolin bars because they restore some of those oils. So, but yeah, now this has a nice scent. It's the warm flannel scent. Um, yeah, really cute. Can't wait for her to wear this again. I dried it in front of the fire last night, so dried very quickly. And now I have one of my most favorite knits. Um, this one's also extremely special. So this is, again, Love Note by Tin Can Knits. This is in the smallest pattern size um, and the colorway. So this is a fingering weight and mohair, a silk mohair held double. And they're both in my Ara colorway, which again is my daughter's name. So yeah, this is Ara's Ara sweater. And she's been wearing this a lot. She's been wearing this a lot this past week. It's because it's been so chilly. And this one's nice because the sleeves are shorter. Um, being five months, her favorite thing is eating whatever is in front of her and sticking things in her mouth. So having this mohair sweater, I was kicking myself in the beginning. Um, it was beautiful, but with the baby and the mohair and me not expecting her to so constantly put everything in her mouth, I was naive. Um, at first I was kind of sad thinking she would never get a chance to wear this, but uh, be again, with the sleeves being shorter, I put this on over um, onesie suits and the sleeves don't come all the way down to her hands. So she can just put her hands and her other sleeve in there and she forgets about the sweater. So yes, um, she can wear this now and it's so pretty. I love this. I want, this looks silly, but <laughs> let me just, what if I tuck my shoulders in? There we go. Now I can look like I'm wearing this sweater. That's hilarious. Um, Believe it or not, I've had less caffeine today than usual, and this is what happens. Yeah, I would like this, though. I have leftover yarn from this, and uh, not enough for a sweater, but something, maybe. Actually, I know exactly what I'm going to make with it. Okay, my next knit, that one took me longer than it needed to. This is the Ruffle Dress. The pattern, I think, is called Ruffle Dress and Romper. So there's um, there's like four or five different options within this Pernille Larson pattern. It's a knitting for olive um, pattern. And the yarn is Pearl Soho Linen Quill in the Pale Mushroom colorway. This was my leftovers from my Reagan cardigan. I think the Reagan only took me two full skeins. So it took me two skeins, so I had one full skein left over and I knit this um, ruffle dress for my baby out of it. So again, this is the Pernille Larson ruffle dress pattern. And it's really, really cute. She has worn it. Um, I will say, so, okay, I am still missing the button. I have yet to do the button on the back. Um, I've just done like a, I did a pin of some kind when she wore it. Um, and then I didn't, I wasn't in a huge hurry to put the button on because she was wearing it, but it was a little bit big on her at the, at the time that she wore it. So then it kind of looked like, because of the color and how big it was, it sort of looked like a potato sack. Which made me laugh because it's this really, you know, beautiful, handmade, ruffled dress. It's wool. It's very adorable. But with it being oversized, it truly looked like a potato sack, which was funny. Um, so, yeah, I need to finish the button on this. And the, the nice thing about these baby knits is with blocking, you can kind of stretch all of them a little bit uh, after a while. So 
she should have some more, plenty of more use out of this. Plus, when she gets a little bit bigger, this will still fit her torso quite well. The armholes are very big. So she could definitely wear this as a shirt with leggings as she gets bigger. So yeah, there's still plenty of wearing time in this. I should go ahead and put the button on. I have it and I have the yarn sitting to the side. I just haven't done it. <laughs> okay. So now we have probably my favorite knit of the year because it's so cute and she looks like a doll when she wears this. <laughs> so this is the baby bear balaclava. Um, I want to say this is also a knitting for olive pattern. It is. Yes. And this is knit out of knitting for olive. So it's another uh, fingering weight and mohair held double. But with this pattern, you actually drop the mohair when you're knitting this band that goes across the face to um, prevent the mohair fibers from getting um, on their on the little baby's face. Um, so yeah, this is a little balaclava. The, air, the ears are extremely cute. I love the shaping on the back. I think it really adds to that element of her looking like a baby doll when she wears this. Um, and when people see her out and about in this, they make the funniest sounds. <laughs> people don't hold back when they see her wearing this adorable balaclava because it is really cute. And so much of me wishes I could share that image, those, these images I have of her wearing this and other knits with the internet, but um, I, I don't show pictures and, and whatnot of her face because I want to keep her as safe as possible. Um, I'm sure you can understand, but, and everybody's different. That's just me. Um, but yeah, so I always want to share things, but I just don't. I try to show things that are like from, you know, neck down. Yeah, but she's so, she's so cute. So cute, especially in this hat. Okay, those are all of my baby knits. So let's talk about, okay, I still have a couple of small accessories. I'm not going to show you all the accessories I've made for myself this year because that would be quite a lot. Um, I have a couple of crochet blankets to show, a couple of quilts. Um, first, I'll show you my shawls for this year. That'll wrap up the knitting, I think. Um, the, some of the small little things I'll show you quickly uh, is my muscle burra, where you sold a Teague. This is Long Dog Yarn, You Remind Me of the Babe. This was from the Labyrinth Collection. Very fun. I love all the vibrant speckles. Um, this was very, uh, this, this knit took me about a week. Uh, I talked about this, I think, on my most recent episode because I just finished this not too long ago, and I have been wearing it quite a bit. Um, I'm not going to unfold it and show you because it's folded just right, but it's that long tube style hat. You know the pattern. Um, if you haven't already made a million of these, this is my first one. I have plans to make quite a few more because I like the way it fits. I didn't fold mine with a fold over cuff because I already have a rather large head and I didn't need to add <laughs> any kind of width, but I think on the next one I might try it with the fold over brim and yeah. Anyway, that's my muscle burrow. That one was fun and I wanted a stockinette project for, um, when I was really busy with taking care of my baby and whatnot because a lot of my projects, especially these past few months, have all been color work and charts and so I needed something easy and this was awesome. Um, and then I have uh, these socks that I knit. They are dirty so they need to be washed. Um, I don't have any of my other socks with me because they're either at home or I don't know where they are. Uh, I've been wearing them quite a bit but these were just some vanilla socks out of the Kremka Lazy Linen. So these are a recycled linen and wool. So there's no nylon in this. Um, I knit these to be my, kind of like my hospital socks. So I brought these to the hospital when I had my baby and I just lounged in these for a couple days as I was recovering, um, but they're beautiful. And again, I sell this yarn in my shop so you can get this in person or online. I have four different colorways, um, very lovely. Okay, let's move to shawls and whatnot. I'm going to pause this and move all of my sweaters out of the way. Okay, I'm back. Um, I forgot I actually did have one more pair of socks sitting next to me I wanted to show because they're amazing. And I also have a pair that I knit and gifted to my mom. And they're, so I'll insert a picture of those right here. Um, they are called Water for the Elephants by Yvette Knoll. And the yarn was Zelber Ball. Uh, or Schuppel Wool Zauber Ball, and this was my colorway um, that I used, and I just paired it with an undyed uh, white yarn for the color work. So 
yeah, there's a picture and they were amazing. I have plenty of yarn, so I would like to make myself a pair at some point. Um, so yeah, I made those socks. I also made the lamp lighter socks and this is a free pattern. This is by, I think they're called Fleur and Ink Knitco. Yep, lamp lighter socks by Fleur and Ink Knitco. And these were the my hand dyed yarns uh, as well as a mini that I got um, from India Untangled last year. Yeah, this was an amazing pattern. I would definitely recommend this one for sure. And the water for the elephants. Both were very fun to knit and absolutely gorgeous. I actually haven't worn these yet. They sit in my shop uh, here on display because they are just that incredible. Maybe in 2023, I will wear them. <laughs> okay, I have many shawls to show you. And again, I'm fairly certain everything I'm showing you I finished this year. With some of them, I would have started last year. Um, so yeah. <laughs> so first, I'll actually start with my Stephen West MCAL from 2021. This was Shawlography, and I started it when the MCAL began last year, and I finished it, I think, in January. So I got probably halfway done before the end of the year last year, and then again, I finished it this year. Um, and you can see I have done a modified version, so I did clues one through four as written, and then for clue five, I omitted the uh, vertical stripes, and I did a ribbing uh, with Pico bind off instead, which is actually the same uh, finishing that Volenvine, Kristen Lair did, so I followed her kind of directions and uh, that she had on her Ravelry project page for how to finish this one, and I'm, I'm really glad that I did that way. Um, yeah, so these are all my hand dyed yarns. This was fun. This was my project that I took to Rhinebeck, um, last year. Yeah, so this is probably my smallest shawl, which is funny because for a lot of people, this was a really large project and people who have come in my shop and seen this on my mannequin are, um, actually surprised when they see mine because of how much smaller it is. And uh, I used the needles that he called for in the pattern. I don't know what my gauge was. I didn't check, but I think omitting that really large border definitely makes a big difference. Um, but this one's really fun. So I loved the uh, the brioche. This was my first and only time so far knitting brioche, although I have some brioche uh, projects queued up. Um, yeah, I never actually wear it because a lot of my knits kind of just stay on display at my shop. So... I haven't worn this one too much, but I really loved the shawlography. It's just kind of wacky and beautiful. Okay, there's that. Then I also knit, this was an anniversary present for my husband. This year was our third anniversary, and this is the Chancellor Palpatine scarf by Tannis Gray. This is from the um, Star Wars Knitting the Galaxy book. Uh, yeah, and I knit this out of Keisha Concept tweed merino it's a merino and cotton yarn and it's an all-over cable a um, little bit difficult to see in this yarn I'm not gonna lie this took a lot of work so that's kind of sad but uh, he has been wearing this um, he works a lot in the cold so this has helped to keep him warm these past couple of weeks um, or past couple of days when he's been wearing it so yeah that was a fun knit I guess Actually, I take that back. This was not a fun knit, but it paid off. Um, this was a 60 inch cable knit sideways over 400 stitches. Uh, again, it was like every row was cabling of some kind. I did not use a cable needle. I was using a DPN. Yeah, there's ways I could have made this project easier on myself, but <laughs> it, it paid off. It's, it's nice and I don't enjoy um, knitting scarves too much, but he wears them a lot, so he's worth it, I suppose. But yeah, it looks nice. There's that one. I'm just going to keep that one on for now. Okay, this one I have shown time and time again, but this is my Calville shawl by Gabriella of the Meriwether Knitting Podcast here on YouTube. This was her debut design and it's beautiful and I um, am patiently waiting for future designs from her. I knit this out of Juniper Moon Farm in the Harriet uh, line and this was one of the, this was orange or heathered orange or what have you. It, I think it was 10, 15 or so, the colorway, regardless. Um, it's gorgeous. It's pure alpaca yarn. I'm thinking I might bring this into my shop here soon. I have a supplier who carries it, so um, you might see this in my shop soon. 
and yeah it's stunning it's a triangular shaped shawl this is one of my top five knits from the whole year absolutely beautiful i have talked at length about this one so feel free to go back and listen to all of my compliments of this pattern um and discussion on the yarn and the topics in previous videos it's gorgeous okay Next one, I guess I'll take off this scarf so I can actually show you these. Looks like I'm running out of time on my camera, so I'll have to pause and make some space. So hopefully my camera angle won't be too different. But this one is Silverleaf by Lisa Haynes, Hans, Hannes, I'm not sure. Um, this is a very popular pattern with many, many projects on Ravelry. Kind of hard to see, but there is this sort of a leaf motif in the lace work that goes along the border. Hopefully you can see that okay. Um, and then there's all these sort of eyelets. And yeah, this was a very special yarn. I got this at Indie Untangled last year as well. Um, this is from Idlewild Clay. They are a clay artist who raised sheep. And um, this is from one of their Navajo churros named Pepper, uh, which is really, really special. special. This is from Pepper's later stage in life. So there's lots of gray, um, just grays in there, and they're really beautiful. Hopefully they kind of come across, and that kind of shows Pepper's age. And um, I know the person who runs Idlewild Clay, when they saw this, they told me that it brought a tear to their eye. I think um, it definitely made them emotional to remember that time and Pepper. And so I felt uh, it was very special to be able to share that with them and so they could see kind of the way that I honored Pepper's life and... Um, yeah, with, with this project. And I, I'm just grateful to have had the opportunity to knit with with this wool. And yeah, to, like I said, honor Pepper. That's my first love of knitting. And this whole world is the the beautiful animals um, in that uh, are responsible for it. So yeah, my husband and I, our um, ultimate goal is to get our own sheep. So hopefully that will happen um, in a couple of years. That would be amazing. Okay, next one. This is my Birds of a Feather by Andrew Mowry, which is gorgeous, but I never wear it because the colors are very um, classic. <laughs> They're very vintage. I call this my vintage mints shawl. Um, so this one, again, super popular pattern. This is um, panels of silk mohair and then merino singles or, or fingering weight, but I used merino singles. So this is Pearl Soho Tussock in the pink fog colorway for the mohair and the merino singles is my hand dyed yarn. This is my sea thing colorway. Um, this is a very nice long shawl. It's got this uh, spine down the center. It comes to a point. It's very, very lightweight. Um, it's really large. Yeah, I haven't yet really worn this again because of the colors. I wish that the pink was at least something different or like, I, I don't know. I, I, w I wish I could change one or the other to make it a little bit more like a color palette I might actually wear, but it is beautiful. Um, I, I, rem I remember this one being a lot of work, I think, to knit. Um, so it was deceptively a long project. Um, I would say I would like to knit it again in colors I would be more prone to wearing, but I don't know if I really want to knit this one again when there's so many other patterns I have yet to uh, try my hand at. Okay, this was another really long knit. This is the Spring Sampler Shawl by Nordic Yarn Imports. It's using Sadness Garn Tin Lina. Um, Sadness Garn, I can't wait to show you guys on a future video. I now carry Sadness Garn in my shop and it's amazing. I'm so glad. Um, but yes, let me go ahead and make a space on my camera. Okay, uh, apologize for any potential difference in the camera view than there was before. I had to delete or empty the trash um, on my camera so that I had enough space. I wish I would have done that from the beginning, but I forgot. Um, okay, so again, this is Spring Sampler Shell by Nordic Yarn Imports. And um, so this is a plant-based fiber by Sadness Garrington Lena, and I have all kinds of weirdness that happened when I was knitting this pattern, so it's not quite right. It's quite strange on one end. Um, yeah, 
I lost steam on this and then I tried to rush through and so I made some mistakes in the increase and decrease I think and so it ended up a little bit weird. I think I lost some of the yarn at the end and um, anyway once you wear it because there's so much fabric you can tuck away those weird places and I do but yeah so this one's kind of fun five colors very lightweight this would be this is nice for um warmer weather because it's not wooly okay so this is another one of my favorite knits from the year and again this was yarn i got from india untangled last year um if you can't tell i really did knit through all of my purchases from my Rhinebeck weekend in 2021. The only yarn that I have left from that trip is two skeins of La Bien Aimé, and uh, I have plans for it. And those I didn't even get at Rhinebeck. I got those at Charlotte Yarn on my way home. So maybe that doesn't count. But yes, this is uh, the powder wrap by Casa Pinka, and this is knit in Julie Aslin Nurtured in the Leaf Pile colorway, which was an in Indie Untangled exclusive and it's gorgeous. This was a booth sample somewhere and so I I decided this would be my project. Very, very gorgeous. I love this cable section. Um, everything about this is so satisfying. I've been wearing this one a lot because it's quite warm. I love the color. It's kind of hard to tell with the lights but it is definitely a mauve shade. Um, it's a pink brown with speckles of some other colors that are spun into the yarn. So yeah, this is a nice big cable-y, wooly shawl. Definitely one of my favorites. One of the warmest knits that I have made for sure. Um, yeah, absolutely beautiful, super incredible. Oh, and then this was the uh, 2022 Lyrical Knits knit along. This was an MCAL. Let me take it off. And actually, this I sewed this dress. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I sewed this dress. Um, I sewed this dress a couple of months ago, specifically to wear with this shawl. So that was fun. Um, this was fabric I had sitting around for a while, and so I just knit this very simple dress pattern. Um, so yeah, that's my dress and the Margaret, the, the mannequin. Okay, I'm losing. I'm losing it. The mannequin has been wearing it, but I have worn it once or so. Anyway, this is the um, As You Wish, an Inconceivable MCAL by Lyrical Knits, the 2022 MCAL based on The Princess Bride. And I'm very excited to see what her theme is for 2023. Um, I have every intention of joining that knit along, but if I recall, I want to say this is pretty early on in the year that she's been hosting these. So last year she did The Knights Who Say Knit, which was a Monty Python and the Holy Grail um, themed knit along and anyway if she does labyrinth or I don't know there's there's a few movies where if she chooses those I won't be able to say no and I don't want to say no because I love these projects they're so fun um but I have a lot of projects that I also want to knit so we'll see we'll see what happens um so these are all of my hand dyed yarns and there's four different colorways um if you are looking for a shawl and cal and perhaps you don't want to do Stephen West because it's maybe not for you or because you've been hearing about the um, extensive work that goes into them. This was very achievable. So this one was over four weeks, I think. And each week I was done with each clue before the week was even over. So I found, I find her MCAL so far to be a little bit more achievable in terms of how much you're knitting in one week. So if you really want to knit the goal of finishing that clue each week and following along with the updates. Maybe you should try her knit alongs because again, I found them to be a little bit more achievable. Um, there's lots of beautiful techniques used in her patterns and she has videos for everything too, just like Stephen West, um, and lots of really fun instructions. So she writes the MCALs using kind of jargon and like references from the movies, um, which are really, really fun. The Knights Who Say Knit one, cracked me up the, like I was laughing the whole time um I watched that movie many times when I was knitting that one that was a lot of fun um and that one was also a rectangular shawl I knit that one in 2021 so I'm not going to show you even though I see it sitting right there on the floor but anyway so yeah this was a fun one very beautiful uh yeah definitely 
You should watch for her 2023. <sighs> Knit along. Okay. So I have a couple of little crochet projects I'll show you. And I have some crochet whips, like some bigger blankets that I'm not going to pull out. They're kind of stuffed away for now, but um, these are the ones that are finished and they're smaller, so a little bit more manageable to show you. Um, first is the Ziggy Blanket. This is a hobby pattern knit out of a hobby, I think it's like a twister cake of some kind. Um, again, I have a long tale of uh, like a long story with this project. This one took quite a while because of a huge mess and I still haven't woven in. This is not really true to my form. I've had a couple projects today where the ends aren't woven in, uh, but usually I weave in ends as I go recently or I do it um, before I, well, write, no, I block and then I weave them in. Um, so usually, usually I have them all done. But there's a few projects like these next two that still need their ends woven. But anyway, this is very vibrant. It's a rainbow crochet blanket for my rainbow baby. And um, yeah, she loves this. So she's been using this quite a bit. So I, I need to go ahead and get rid of this end um, for her. But yeah, she's been enjoying this one. This was very special to finally finish for her. And the next one is, this is the Om Rainbow Blanket by Mel U Crochet. And uh, it's not a hobby pattern, although you can buy it on hobby, but the yarn is actually from hobby, now that I'm recalling. This is their Rainbow Bamboo, and so it is super, super soft and it's held double throughout this pattern so this is very um heavy and thick and just really really beautiful and um the ends are not woven in and there's quite a few so i need to do that it's, i think with crochet projects i take my time more than with knitting projects plus she hasn't used this yet this has just been decor on the back of my rocking chair in her nursery which she sleeps in my bedroom for now so i'm not in the nursery a whole lot that's my excuse <laughs> maybe i can stand up and show this one Yeah, so it's in the shape of a rainbow. So it's like this. There's bobbles down at the bottom and that's where all the ends are. But it's absolutely beautiful. Um, yeah, this was a very fun project to crochet. Uh, it was fun to hold the yarns double and then to um, sort of marl them. That's how you transition from one color to the next. Uh, that was fun because marling is really beautiful and I I want to say I'd never actually done it. I've only used yarn that kind of naturally has that look itself, like the Ziggy Blanket yarn has marling in the yarn. So this was fun. Uh, yeah, very quick project too. And again, it's super uh, heavy and substantial. So this will be a beautiful blanket that she can have for a really long time. Okay, that's all of my fiber projects, I, I want to say, uh, for the most part. <laughs> I do have a few things that are just not here, but that's okay. Um, so I have three quilts that I will quickly show you. Let me put this back on. Now I feel like I'm, um, I feel like I'm dressed like a Fremen in Dune, which is my favorite book, but they're costuming in the newer movie, I feel like if you just changed up the color palette, I would look like a Fremen. I just need my eyes to be a little bit more blue. I wish I was good at video editing and then I would turn myself into a Fremen. <laughs> okay. So quilt number one, which I think this was actually the second one I made. This is the stripey quilt by Made Every Day, which is here on YouTube. And um, this was a free pattern um, that she's got as well as a video tutorial. So this was actually how I learned how to quilt. I never quilted before. I sew, but I do like really easy garments and then I do a lot of project bags because that's part of what I sell. But I'd never done a quilt, so I wanted to make a few for my daughter and so I did. Um, this one's very a very light color palette, so it might be difficult to see, but this one has, it's like six or seven different fabrics that you use. So 
you've got your main sort of alternating fabric. This this one is in between all of the strips. Um, and then you've got like alternating additional fabric. So I did a lot of rainbows. Um, let's see. And moons and stars and oh I liked this one with the little woodland animals in the navy color. And then the back of this one the theme for her nursery is sort of, it's like a mishmash of Winnie the Pooh and moons and stars. So the backing for this quilt is a big panel with moons and stars. And um, all of these quilts I quilted myself on just my regular heavy duty Singer machine, the gray one. Uh, yeah, so I just did very, very simple quilting. I did two, two inch by two inch um, diagonals. And so I've got all these little squares. This one I used a pretty pink quilting thread. Um, yeah, this was nice to make this. This is a crib size, so she'll have this for a while. It's a nice uh, like toddler bed kind of size quilt, as well as the next one is all the same details, just different fabrics. I should drink this. This is the um, Yorkshire tea. It's the biscuit brew. Um, I fully blame Hannah of the corner and craft because this is what she drinks and I thought that it sounded really nice and so I paid an astronomical amount of money for one box of tea aka 10 US dollars which sorry there are people in my parking lot um yes ten dollars for 40 tea bags for a household staple like Yorkshire I don't know I think that's a lot of money but it was worth it. I'm really enjoying it. Okay, next quilt. Goodness, my hair is so staticky. Okay, <laughs> next quilt, all the same details, just different fabrics. This one I like quite a bit. It's very fun. Um, when I show you the backing, you'll see what I mean. I used, again, very light colored kind of fabrics. Um, so my main sort of alternating one, again, has moons and stars, but it's got the bright yellow. And then I have some really pretty um, alternating fabrics. This one I mimicked in both of the quilts. I love this one. It's rainbow snails, which is extremely cute. Lots of different pink and bunny fabrics. Oh, this one was one of my favorites for sure. Mushrooms and foxes and what have you. And then the back is amazing. <laughs> I love this. I would love to make a quilt for my bed out of a fabric like this. Very bright and cheerful and it's the same quilt design so the two two inch by two inch um, diagonal lines in both directions so you go this way this way this way and then this way this way this way <laughs> and then you get these two inch squares um, all said and done. So again I used a pink thread for <clears throat> thread for that one. Oh there's a lot of fibers and hairs surrounding me right now. Okay, and then this next quilt is quite an achievement for me. So I made those two quilts and then I really wanted to step up my game and I love Susie quilts. I follow her on Instagram and I really love all of her work. So I wanted to make um, a pattern that she came out with this year and this is called the Adventureland quilt and it is amazing. I really love this. Um, I, the fabric for this is a jelly roll from Connecting Threads, which was what she used in one of her samples or one of the quilts that she made. I will perhaps try to put some footage in so you can see the full quilt if you've never seen this before, because this one is a throw size, so it's a lot bigger. So it's very nice and colorful and um, sticking with the rainbow theme. I really love this color palette. So these are repeating. So you've got your pinks and violets and yellows and then you've got some blues and greens. And then when you go around, it alternates again back to these and then again to the blues and greens. And then I just did um, this I just, uh, again, I quilted this myself and I just kind of went, I made it up as I went. So in the white portions, which have really small white 
flowers for a little bit of some visual intrigue when you look up close. I just did really, I think these were quarter inch, um, just, yeah, like quarter inch lines all through, so on each of the white panels, so it's nice and textured. And then for these guys, I just did quilting in the ditch, essentially, or I actually I did quilting like on either side of where the stripes meet. So um, yeah, this was this was really fun. It was great to know that I could do um, a quilt this size on my machine. It just took a lot of patience, but um, if you want a quick quilt, this one only took me two or three active days of working on it, I wanna say, just to get this done, so that was awesome. Using the jelly roll really helped. And then the backing fabric is some coral roses. So very busy on that side. <laughs> I prefer the other side, but when I got this backing fabric, I ordered it online, I think for pickup from a fabric store. And yeah, if I had gone in person, which I, I wanna say this was like, yeah, I don't know. If I'd gone in person, I probably wouldn't have picked it, but it, it does work, it's pretty. Oh my goodness, okay. So that's essentially all I was planning on showing you. Of course, I have quite a few, quite a few additional things I have made this year. Uh, as I said, I have a yarn store. These are my hand dyed yarns behind me. So I have dyed a lot of yarn this year. I have sewn a lot of project bags for myself and for my shop. And so it's been an incredible year for making for me. Um, so since I have it here, I do have uh, two other quick knitting whips I will show you just because they are one of them I think will definitely be done in the next few days before the end of the year so I wanted to show it because I do think it will be a 2022 make all said and done unless something crazy happens we'll see <laughs> and then my other one is nearly done so let me show you those so this one is actually my um, 2022 Stephen West MCAL I did do that this year but it's not finished, so I didn't include it with my shawls. But I am on the last clue. It's just taking me a while. And uh, I want to get this done before my event in February, February that I'll be attending, because we kind of all decided that was a goal that we were sharing, was to all wear these together. Um, so that's my goal. I have to get this done before the beginning of February. Okay. So... I'm sorry, the needles will probably bang on things and you'll hear them and yeah, I apologize. That's a little annoying, but it's kind of inevitable. So this is where I'm at. Um, I haven't knit this in a week or so because I've been working on my sweaters. I am a sweater knitter through and through. Um, I will knit sweaters all day, every day. I love shawls, they're very fun, but this one has been uh, some work, <laughs> okay? So that's where I'm at. I just have to finish going along. Um, I guess I'm about halfway done with this section. Um, so picking up the stitches along this I-cord edge of this strip and doing these horizontal rows. They alternate with um, stockinette and garter. So I have to finish that. Um, and I will be doing the early out for this project. So once I kind of do those sides and then do a little bit of work down here, um, this will be done. So I'm looking forward to that. I probably will also include tassels like a lot of people have done. I think it's kind of cute. This side I haven't started at all with this strip, but I did, I did um, go ahead and make one of the little I-cord details for my cables just to kind of encourage me because I'm really looking forward to when these cables all have this I-cord sort of rope going through uh, all of them. I think it looks really awesome and this was very quick to make. So I went ahead and made one. Um, and yeah, I think that makes it stand out even more so. I love, these are my hand dyed yarns. This orange color is my ginger carrot cake colorway. And so I think it looks beautiful with wood fire clay. Um, and this is also a very special project for me, which is part of why I haven't given up on it. Not that I was intending on it, but I know a lot of people have ripped theirs out or just set it to the side. I do want to get this done because, um, so yeah, if you've, have seen my previous episodes or perhaps you haven't um my best friend actually died last october um and yeah i don't oh 
not gonna go. I can't believe it's been a year already, but uh, this this wood fire clay, uh, my friend Jerome was actually the first person to ever buy my yarn when I was starting out on Etsy. And it was very silly because he doesn't knit or crochet or anything. Uh, but I remember publishing my Etsy site and I texted him and I was like, well, I did it, I'm here I go. And um, within like 30 seconds, I had a notification saying I made a sale on Etsy and I thought, what, that's amazing, what's happening? And I looked and um, he had just moved to Florida not too long before that. Um, and I saw that it was his name and he bought this yarn, um, which was ex extremely sweet and very silly of him. And it meant the world to me for him to support me in that way. Um, but this is the colorway that he bought. And this was actually part of that same um, initial sort of dye lot with the yarns that he had. So um, I had I had two skeins left over in my shop and I decided to pull them and use them for myself in the shawl. And then I am retiring that colorway because, yeah, I'm sure you can understand why. <laughs> it's special and I'm just going to leave things here with this with this shawl once this is finished and then just cherish uh, that memory every time I get to see this or wear this. So that's a uh, wood fire clay and yeah, very special to me. Um, I kind of wish I would I would know what happened to that yarn. I'm sure it was in his apartment. Uh, I'm not sure, but I hope that it's made its way into somebody's hands and that they're turning it into something beautiful. I don't know. So yeah, that's my, uh, my Stephen West. MCAL. Uh, I plan on having this done in the next few weeks. If I just, if I really sat down and worked on it, I could knock out the rest in one week, but maybe I will after I finish this next project I'll show you. Okay. Thanks for listening to my little story time there. That's something that's really important to me and hard to talk about, um, but I appreciate you guys listening. So, um, okay, this is my No Place Like Gnome sweater. This is a pattern by, um, let's see. Pattern by Martina Moskova. I think I wrote that correctly. And I will have, again, all these names below, but Martina Moskova, no place like Gnome. Um, I really love this. Uh, last regular podcast episode, I was talking about my plans to knit this with my gnome collection, which was a mini skein uh, set that I dyed and released um, at the beginning of December. And I saved one for myself because I wanted to knit this sweater. And so I used my minis to actually knit uh, my gnomes and everything. So, uh, and then the pink color is Knit Picks. This is the fingering twill in the rosewater color. And, um, I had never used this yarn before and I absolutely love it so much. And I'm sad because I think this rose water colorway is actually discontinued, which I love. I love pinks like this. So I'm sad um, and tempted to buy more while it's inexpensive for future projects, but I'm trying to behave. I'm hoping I purchase enough for this. I think I did. Uh, if I have to, I will um, finish out the sleeves with just adding some color work panels. So I'll use up some other yarns. I'm sorry, it's very noisy with all the trucks. I have some sort of industrial buildings nearby me and there's a lot of trucks going back and forth all the time. Okay, so uh, these are my gnomes and they're super adorable. Um, this red colorway that I dyed is called Gnome's Hat, which of course, Gnome's Hat, the flesh bits, that was my mushroom stew colorway and it just so happened that it was an excellent colorway for um, uh, his skin. I've got a, just an undyed white for his beard. The blue is the weathered tunic colorway that I dyed. And once these block out, they'll look a little bit more um, gnome-like, but there's actually like a belt buckle in there that's kind of hidden. The stitch is, it's a brown accent. Um, yeah, so when I block that, that'll come out a bit. And then there is, a, there's like fencing between all the different motifs. So then we've got a row of strawberries, which I very much love. And then this row, I actually changed this one. So this was meant to be some green pears and I knit um, foxes instead. So I'm excited to block those out. They're really, really cute. There's little black tips at the ears. Um, 
yeah and you can kind of see where I started to do the full body I just left it at the shoulders I was going to do a full body but when I kind of sat back and looked at it I realized if I did the full body the space between the fences would have been a lot wider here than in the other sections and I think it would have lost some of its cohesiveness if I would have done that so I decided to just do the fox heads and then I just finished the watering cans um I did that a little bit different from the pattern too so the pattern just has you do like a an outline of the watering can but I filled mine in with the blue instead of just the outline it was a simple adjustment and I think it looks really nice and um, now I'm having to just pick how I want to finish this out. The next motif is a little row of some dainty little flowers. I think I will probably do mushrooms, which many people who have knit this, um, I say many, there's only 15 projects so far, including mine. <laughs> but I saw a few other people included um, chickens on theirs, and I've considered that. I do have a chicken chart, <laughs> a chicken chart, so I may add some chickens in there, maybe after the watering cans. Um, and then finish out with a row of mushrooms before the ribbing because I just tried this on today and this so far fits absolutely beautifully. I'm very excited about the fit for this one. Um, it just needs a little bit more length. So the sweater I'm wearing today is a cropped sweater, but it's obviously there's a bit of ease built in. This one has just a little bit of ease in the body, but not a whole lot. Um, so I do intend on, I mean, once I block it, it'll grow just a bit, but I want to at least have one, if not two more color work motifs. So I will definitely do mushrooms and maybe some chickens. I'll probably omit the flowers. And if anything, I might use all the different colors. So the orange, the red, the blue, and the green to maybe do flowers around the cuff. Um, my other plan for the sweater is I don't want to do sleeve decreases. I would like to have kind of a balloon sleeve because it's a bit more of a fitted body. So I think that will look really cute. Um, and that would be an easy thing to rip back out if I tried it on and decided I wanted to fit a sleeve. So we'll see, but I think I'll um, do that. Uh, okay, yeah. I think I'll wrap it up. Um, so thank you so much for watching. My next episode plans, I would like to do a regular podcast, although I've pretty much shown you everything I've been working on. Um, I have a few little things that I've been working on that I would like to show next time. Um, I did knit this year the Magic Toadstool mitts by Stone Knits, and I sent those away as a gift. Um, I'm working on a second pair for myself right now. I've just about finished the first one, so I will have those done the next time and show you guys those. They're wonderful and whimsical. Um, they'll look very cute with my gnome sweater. So I've got those to work on. I'm actually knitting a gnome. I think the camera's askew. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I just noticed that. Um, hopefully that's not bothering you. Anyway, I'm knitting a gnome by Sarah Shira and it's the gnome de plume. I finished the hat. I need to block it a little bit per her recommendation and then pick up the stitches for the body. Keep going. Um, I think I would like to film a video on all of my stash next because I used to be a person who didn't really have stash but owning a yarn store and spending your whole everyday waking moment thinking about talking about selling creating yarn you acquire some yarn so I I think um I will do a yarn stash video with project plans if you guys would be interested again sorry for the noise out there um there's a daycare next to me and uh there's Lots of noises associated with daycares, <laughs> if you can hear that. So if you'd be interested in that, let me know. I think it would be a lot of fun. Um, I didn't want to include 2023 knitting plans in this video for the same reason a lot of people are not. This was already quite a lengthy video. Um, so maybe I'll, I will do that or I'll combine that with a stash video. So, but thank you so very much for joining me today. Um, I look forward to seeing you guys again. I hope that if this is your first time watching me, you'll subscribe to my channel and like this video, do all those things. If you would like to shop my yarn store, you can visit me, me in person. Um, details can be found on my website for where I'm located. Um, or you can shop online on my website. I do ship in the U.S. In 2023, I'm hoping to expand my shipping to not just the U.S. There's a lot of 
technical things behind that I've, I've been trying to figure out and it's kind of a headache for me. Um, so, and then events, um, if you would like to visit my shop, noisy truck, goodness gracious. Um, if you'd like to visit for my anniversary party, that will be January 28th. I'm open 10 to 4. I'll probably, I think I'll have extended hours, so 10 to 6 that day. And I'll have a little anniversary party here at my shop to celebrate being open for a year. I will be attending the Biddy Knits uh, Fiber Arts pop-up in Atlanta at the Second Self Brewery on February 4th. That's a Saturday. Um, so if you want to come visit me in Atlanta, I will have my hand dyed yarns. I'll have some project bags and I'll also bring along some of the other stuff that I carry in my shop. So you can find me there. I, uh, this year in April, I vended at the Great Smoky Mountain Fiber Fair, um, in Townsend, Tennessee. And I just applied to go again this coming year. Um, I think that they must be out for the holiday or, or what have you because I haven't heard back yet, but um, I'm looking forward to hopefully vending at that one again. That one was a lot of fun, so I'll have more details if I get to go to that one. And any other events I, I sign up for, um, that's everything for now as far as fiber events go. Uh, do I have anything else to say? Oh, I do have a really fun announcement if you've made it to this part. Um, my shop is expanding, so... I don't know when, but eventually this wall will not be here anymore because we are expanding into the next building. Um, and so that's going to be one of our big projects for 2023. And I'm so excited and grateful, but um, if you've been to my shop, it's super cute, but it's quite small in the front. I have a large, a couple of large rooms in the back that I use for my studio space for yarn dyeing and sewing and um, storage and, and whatever. But my storefront is quite small, um, but pretty soon it's going to be really large, which is great because I have been bringing in some very exciting products for my store. Um, so I, I'll probably do a whole other video that's on my, my sort of plans. It's been hard to record much of anything recently, but I would like to do a bit of a store tour and show you guys my products because since I last recorded, I have brought in Sadness Gone, I've brought in Delicue, Modern Daily Knitter, which are pattern books. I've brought in Coats & Co. Fiber Co. Coats & Co. Fiber Co. I think. Coats & Co. Fiber Company, um, which is a hand dyer. And yeah, I've got some really amazing stuff to show you guys. So, oh, and Koigu. I have the Koigu uh pencil box sets that are actually next to me. Those are incredible. I have twice sheared sheep. I'm going to be bringing in um, probably some children's books. We'll see. My husband was like, just stick to yarn. But I'm thinking about expanding to books, like kind of like a mini book store and yarn store. We'll see. All right. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm going to head off. So I have a lot of cleanup and editing to do. Um, so thank you so much. And I hope you have had a wonderful week and year. And I hope that you're looking forward to the many projects that you will get to get your hands on in 2023. And I hope that you enjoyed your year of making in 2022, um, all of your successes and, you know, failures, things that needed some, you know, no such thing. They were all part of the journey. Okay. All right. Thank you. And talk to you guys later. Bye.